friends welcome back to my channel rouse rising if you are new here my name is katie today i am sharing with you a day in my kitchen restocking my pantry with all of my bulk whole foods as you can see right here i'm gathering up all of my empty jars and one of the ways that i manage my bulk food because as you can see i have a big five gallon bucket of here of oatmeal um, but the way that I manage it is I get a, I run through all of my stuff. So I'll run through this oatmeal, I'll get it to empty. In the meantime, I'm thinking, okay, well, my oatmeal's empty. So what else can I eat instead of oatmeal or how, what else can I use instead of that? And so I might use rice or more bread products or more whatever it is until those product jars are empty. So you can see I have so many empty jars here and right now I'm gonna refill my rice because I got my rice jar all the way down to empty and I set it aside and I just pretended like I didn't have any more rice for a while until I accumulated more empty jars. And then um, you're gonna see that I'm gonna start refilling my grain jars. So I ran out of grain this is gonna be probably my hard red wheat maybe. And then uh, the other one I've got to refill as well, but I go ahead and I wait until my grain jars are empty and I eat something else out of my pantry. So that is how I make sure that I am using up my bulk food products and kind of triggering to make sure that I am using everything evenly or equally. Uh, or if not equally, that I'm at least rotating through the food. So it's been a few weeks that I've been collecting my jars and just using through everything because what I wanted to do was a large uh, pantry restock with you all. And I realized as I was accumulating jars that this is the best method for me and my family to uh, work through our, all of our grains and all of these kinds of products. I also keep things like salt in bulk. I keep sugar in bulk, molasses, uh, a little bit of oils and fats and things like that, but those can tend to go rancid. So I don't keep those in bulk quantities on my shelves. Those are things that I buy every month or every few months in the largest quantity I can without it going rancid. So I've got a bag of beans here and I'm trying to be more I guess purposeful with all of my beans and things like that and when I see a good price at the store and this time I saw a good deal on black beans I think they were like uh, a little around a dollar for those black beans and typically black beans are a little bit more ex one of the more expensive beans I've found but I also ordered a huge bag from Azure and at the time that I filmed this I did not have those black beans yet, but I had a few bags that I needed to put into some jars just so that they were protected and could be stored a little bit longer or so that I would work through those black beans because I'm getting more. So if I see them and they're in a jar on a shelf, I'm more likely to use them where if they're slumped over in a bag in a corner somewhere in a deep dark shelf. Okay, so right here I was refilling our banana snacks. We like these dehydrated bananas and I'm going through my two gallon bucket that I have a gamma seal lid on and I'm pulling out all of my fruit and I'm trying to use up all of my fruit. So these are my fruit jars that I'm refilling right now, all of my dried fruit and I try to work through all the craisins, all the raisins, all the bananas before I refill them. Cause if I just keep really refilling the craisins, my kids are gonna eat all of the craisins really, really fast. So I kind of, you know, they don't know that there's, or they do know that there's more craisins in a back stock, but they don't think about that. If the craisin jar is empty, they go to the raisin jar or the bananas. If either one of those is empty, they just go to whatever's left. And so then when we run out of all of our fruit jars, that triggers me to, okay, now we're out of all of our quick grab snacks. So I need to refill those. That's how that triggers me to do that. That way I'm cycling through all of my fruit evenly and we're not just burning through the really expensive, delicious apple juice infused craisins that we get from Azure. So I've been buying all of my dried fruits and things from Azure because I can get organic dried fruits from there. And that's something that I haven't been able to find in the grocery store 
uh, as much. Occasionally I can find organic dried fruits uh, for a reasonable price at the grocery outlet. And when I find that, I do go ahead and grab that if I can and I'll buy a larger quantity. So I grabbed some craisins because I knew that I was running out of my Azure craisins. So I grabbed a bag of the sweetened <laughs> craisins from the restaurant supply store just to kind of get us through until my, my next Azure order. So right here, I am refilling some more pantry items. This is the corn masa that I picked up uh, on my last Azure standard order. I do wanna learn how to make corn tortillas. I think I'm gonna get a tortilla press before I attempt that. I'm, I might try to make them by hand, but I'm a little bit weary of that. If you make corn tortillas, let me know your tips and tricks down in the comments below because I could really use them. I'm feeling pretty intimidated. I need to watch some YouTube videos. So if you've seen a good corn tortilla YouTube video, you can drop that down below in the comments too. That would be really helpful. So I am going to stuff some oxygen absorbers into this this jar of corn masa because I don't feel like I'm going to get to use it um, in a timely manner. So I'm just going to try to extend its shelf life a little bit more because I did get a five pound bag and this is not something that I am used to cooking with. So I am writing on the jars the date that I packaged it into the jars and I'm writing exactly what it is. And this is organic white corn masa. You can see my little guy there being a big helper. He likes to go through all my drawers and all of my cabinets and he likes to take everything out of them. So I spend a lot of my day putting everything back just so he can remove it again. My oxygen absorbers right there, you see I'm putting them into a little jar and sealing it so that those oxygen absorbers stay fresh, so that they stay, um, I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for, somebody help me out here. Anyways, you have to quickly put them into either reseal the bag, vacuum seal the bag that the oxygen absorbers are, are in, or I like to just immediately put them in a jar because that gives me easy, quick, access to my oxygen absorbers. I just unscrew the lid, take out what I need, screw the lid back on real fast, and that preserves my oxygen absorbers. Here we are filling up my coconut palm sugar. I do get this from Walmart because they have been sold out from Azure lately. So what I'm doing is I remembered, oh yeah, I've got my countertop sugar jar that we use for coffee and tea and things like that. And then I have my large Vlasic I love this jar. I think it's so pretty. It still has some label on it that I need to pull off of there. But my friend Amy gave this to me. She gave it to me with a rabbit stew in it. And that rabbit stew, it was after my baby Annika was born. And that rabbit stew was so delicious. And every time I fill up this jar, it reminds me of my friend Amy and that delicious rabbit stew that she made and brought to me in this jar. And I've kept it and put my sugar in it. And then right here, this is my Bragg's apple cider vinegar bottle, but I'm going to re be refilling it today with my large gallon of apple cider vinegar. And I'm just repurposing this little bottle. I'm just going to keep on doing this with this Bragg's bottle. This is not Bragg's brand apple cider vinegar that I'm putting in there. This is just the Azure standard organic apple cider vinegar. I was lucky enough to get this before they had the fire. So I'm thankful for that. And we go through about a bottle of apple cider vinegar every month to every month and a half, these uh, smaller bottles, not the gallon size ones. And there's Annika with her little cute fingers. She's gonna be eating some of the sugar off of the counter that I spilled because I'm not gonna clean it up until the end. This is one of the uh, organic maple syrups that I got pre-inflation prices. So I think this was like a $14 bottle of maple syrup and now they're up to anywhere between $16 and $25 a bottle. Gosh, I wish I would have stocked up a long time ago. I should probably go ahead and stock up now, but I'm looking at that three gallons of maple syrup that Azure has. They do have that on their website and it's the kind that you can just keep pouring from and it stays fresh. So again, I'm just putting some more beans into a jar and I am going to uh, suck all of the air out of this jar, remove all the oxygen, and these beans are gonna sit on the shelf in my long-term storage and I'm cutting off the label 
and I'm gonna stick this label in the jar because it also has the cooking directions. And beans are pretty easy to cook. You just cover them with about an inch of water and you just let them cook on low for a long time after you've soaked them or not, but soaking them helps. So I know how to cook beans, but this is in case of my absence for whatever reason that whoever stumbles upon, upon this jar of black eyed peas, they can know how to cook them. So just trying to be smart there. And I'm using my game saver with a ball vacuum sealer attachment. And I'll link this down below for you to check out. And everything in this video will be linked down in this video's description. A lot of my links are affiliate links and that just means that it costs you nothing extra, but I get a little kickback or a small percentage. Typically it's about 10% of every sale. Every little bit helps our family and so I'm happy to share those links with you. A lot of times my links do have discounts or discount codes along with them. So those will be linked along with the products in this video's description or the websites. Um, a lot of times you can use my discount codes on the whole website and not just a particular product. So check those out if you are in need. I have things like the Redmond's Real Salt. You can get 10% off of anything on their website when you use my code Rouse Rising. And then I'll also link uh, these items that I am showing you right here, the vacuum sealer and the vacuum sealer jar attachment, those will be linked below from Amazon. This is my soap dispenser and I have a large gallon or a couple gallon, how many is this? I'm not sure, a large uh, thing of dish soap. And again, I'm buying all of this stuff bulk from Azure because it's saving me so much money and time. I don't have to buy this at the grocery store because let me tell you, I forget to buy soap all the time from the grocery store. Every time I'm out, I forget to buy it or every time I'm nearly out, it takes me a few trips to remember to get it because I'm terrible at keeping a list. And I really like this Smiley Suds dish soap. It is unscented and we prefer that for washing our dishes. And if I can remember to next month, I'm gonna get their dishwashing detergent as well. And it comes in a, a pour spout bottle like this, but it is powder. And then you can just pour it into your dishwasher and Yep, can't wait to get that too. But every month I'm just trying to remember to add on one cleaning supplies in bulk because budget purposes. So I encourage you to do that too. If you just get one thing a month in bulk, then you are gonna save money in the long run. And eventually you're gonna have so many bulk products around your home and you're gonna be set to where you won't have to go to the store for a month or for two months or three months it's going to be wonderful. It's going to save you so much time and so much money. I know I've been grateful to be able to get these products myself. This is the Redmond salt I was talking about. I picked up their 10 gallon or sorry, my goodness, 10 pound pail of Redmond salt. And what I like to do is I fill one large jar to keep in my pantry right there behind me, my white pantry. And then I also like to have a smaller jar that I keep on the counter for easy access because I make bread dough or bread almost daily and we use a lot of salt in our cooking. So it's convenient for me to have salt in multiple containers nearby. And then this is how I cycle through it. So when my quart size jar runs out of salt and there's another little container, not the one I just kicked out of the way, but I have a salt container on my counter. But when this quart draw jar runs out, I just refill it and keep it back there behind me, easy access. And then the 10 pound pail goes and gets stored away. And then I bring it out when I bring out all of my other pantry supplies because when I run through this salt, I have some backup salt in my cabinet too, uh, just some normal Morton's sea salt. And a lot of times I will use uh, that Morton's sea salt until I get to my pantry restocking phase of the year. Here I am restocking the rice again because you guys know we've been eating a lot of rice lately and this restock is happening over about a week, a week's time. Uh, where I can get a little bit done one day and then the next day, like, you know, it's always crazy around here. So I just tried to film when I was refilling my jars and rice gets refilled about every week 
or maybe even sooner than that because I have to refill it again as I'm editing this video. We are down to like one cup remaining in this large half gallon sized jar. So just, I just keep cycling through and I actually need to put all of uh, my bulk rice into my five gallon buckets, but I haven't done that yet. I'm just, life's been crazy getting the garden going and everything, trying to fight off the deer. And I am going to bust into this 10 pound bag of flour that you guys saw me vacuum seal. I vacuum sealed it for the purpose of that video just to demonstrate that you can vacuum seal flour to help keep it. So if you're not milling your own flour, you vacuum seal the bags that you're buying at the store and that's going to preserve it longer. You also want to make sure that you're freezing your bags of flour before you vacuum seal them just to make sure that you're freezing any eggs or anything that could be in your bag of flour, any little bugs. So I did that and then I let it come to room temperature and I vacuum sealed it and I threw it up on the shelf. I did notice when I dumped it into my bucket, this flour was really clumpy and I'm not sure if it's just because of the type of flour that it is. It is a unifying whole wheat bread flour and I don't know if it absorbed a little bit of moisture maybe in the freezer but it's been sitting out for a good two weeks um, before I vacuum sealed it and then it was sitting out for another couple weeks um, so it's it's nice and dry I don't notice that it has any moisture in it but uh, I just noticed it was clumpy so I'm filling up my flour containers because I'm going to use this up I have a lot of grains that I am just saving and I've decided I'm going to use up all of my flour stores now and use or save my grains once I'm done with flour and while I can buy flour in the store I will. Many of you were wondering about cleaning supplies or what I use to clean and I am going to make a fresh batch because it's been a minute since I've made my vinegar orange solution and I've been out of it in my spray bottle. I recently used up the last bit of it and I just wanted to start all over again with a fresh batch. I had been adding vinegar to some orange peels for quite a while and uh, once I went through all of that it's just time for new. So here we have our fresh clean jar. My last one I'm gonna admit it grew a scoby on it. That happens sometimes too. Um, if you know what a scoby is it's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast and often it's associated with kombucha but you can form it on vinegars and things like that. So today I am just going to be making a fresh batch of cleaner to restock my home with my vinegar cleaner and I'm going to show you a way to speed up the process because like I said my spray bottle is empty. I do that. I just run through everything until everything gets empty. And then when I have time, I do the refill. And as I explained earlier in my video, that's how I make sure that I am using up everything in my home and making sure that nothing goes to waste. So as I'm peeling these oranges, my kids are coming along and they're eating all the oranges. They're so excited because they love peeled oranges. A lot of times I cut up their oranges just because it's easier. Uh, but this time I am peeling them and throwing these in the jar. So next thing I'm going to do is warm this gently, double boiler method. So it's going to go on the stove in a warm pot of water and it's just going to get warm. I'm not going to cook it. I'm not going to boil it. I'm not going to do anything like that. I just want to warm up the vinegar so that it can get this, uh, it can get the essential oils pulled out of these orange peels. The orange essential oil is really what is going to cut grime and grease. That's going to be the grease cutter, the grime cutter in this cleaning solution that we're making today. And of course, obligatory bread picture because y'all know bread is life around here and we love it. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the notification bell because I'm going to be sharing with you an amazing sourdough chocolate birthday cake. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Give this video a thumbs up. Until next time, bye!